Hi everyone and welcome back to another video about, you guessed it, Imperial. So I get a lot of questions like what A levels did you do, what were your predicted grades, what universities did you apply to, what was in your personal statement, and today in this video I'm just gonna wrap up all of that. A quick intro about me, my name is Nikita and I just finished my second year studying EIE and Imperial, that's Electronic Information Engineering. So I'm gonna go in chronological order starting with my A levels. For A level I did Maths, Physics, Chemistry, and I did an AS in English Literature, which I really enjoyed but I wasn't very good at it. I actually did really well in my AS exams and so for my A levels I was predicted an A star in maths, an A star in physics, and an A in chemistry. When I was in my last year of school I applied to a bunch of universities, none of which I actually wanted to go to. It was nothing to do with the universities I applied to, I just didn't want to go to any university at that time. I mean this was almost four years ago so it's kind of hard for me to remember, but I think I applied to Edinburgh, Bristol, Manchester, Southampton, I really don't remember what the other one was. Oh, it was Oxford, it was Oxford. <laughs> and I got into all of them apart from Oxford. I did the test and then I didn't get through to the second round of interviews after the test. Anyway, so I decided to take a gap year. During my gap year, I did a 12 month placement. I worked at a small startup tech company. It was really fun and I really enjoyed it. The company was called Starleaf and I worked as a DevOps engineer there, so a lot of coding basically. I learned loads of really good skills when I was working there, like I learned Python, just full stop I learned Python. Other things like SQL, just how to work in a Linux environment, using Git, things like that. So when I got my A-level grades I got an A-star in maths, an A-star in chemistry, and an A-star in physics. So I got two A-stars and an A but not in the subjects that I thought I was going to get them in. And then during my gap year I applied to university a second time. Again, I really can't remember the universities I applied to very well but I'm going to try for you guys. So obviously I applied to Imperial, I applied to UCL, I think I applied to Edinburgh again. Okay, I really don't remember the other ones. But anyway, at this time I was actually applying for mechanical engineering. Even when I applied to university, back when I was still in sixth form, I was applying for mechanical engineering. And even when I applied to university for a second time, I was still applying for mechanical engineering. So after a few months of working, I was really enjoying the work I was doing, and I decided that maybe I didn't want to go into mechanical engineering, and I wanted to kind of stay more in this field. So I decided to switch my course on something that was a little bit more computer focused. So in January I sent Imperial an email asking if I could switch from mechanical engineering to electronic engineering, and I sent them a new personal statement. And then I think about two weeks after I switched on to electronic engineering, I got an email inviting me for an interview, and the interview was in February. So at the company I was working at during my gap year, there were Imperial graduates, and there was even an Imperial graduate for the course that I was applying to. And so when I was called for an interview, she asked me who I had, and she told me that the lecturer I had was somebody who was definitely going to read my personal statement. Apparently they don't all read your personal statement if they're interviewing you. But to prepare for the interview, I would say they are definitely going to ask you why do you want to study this subject. Even when I was asked in the interview, I was kind of surprised, but obviously I still had an answer prepared. So make sure you have a rough answer about why you want to study what you're applying for. Side note, by the way, about the interview who I had, um, his name is Mike Brooks, and he actually retired that same year, so he was never my lecturer. But obviously, because he was retiring, he was pretty old. However, the thing about the Tripoli building in Imperial is that it is tall. I think it's the tallest building on the Imperial campus. It has about 12 floors, I think, and his office was on the 10th floor, and he told me the lifts take ages to arrive, so we'll just walk up, it'll be quicker. To the 10th floor, and I have a friend who is like three years above from me. He's graduated now, but like when I was in first year, he was in fourth year, and he told me he also had the same interviewer who also made him walk up the stairs three years prior. Like, this guy must be walking up and down the stairs so much, his cardiovascular fitness must be so good. Because they do interviews every week, and then there's like, probably ten interviews every day, he's going up and down those stairs. Anyway, let me tell you what happened in the interview, <laughs> after we'd walked up the stairs for like, five minutes. So he asked me why I want to study Tripoli, e, and he showed me like a simple geometric maths question, I can put it like, over here on the side. Um, but it's basically like three circles with a triangle and you just have to work out the area where they're crossed over. I felt like it was quite intuitive so I was able to answer it immediately. And then he asked me if I had any questions and obviously I had like two or three questions prepared. And then after that I think there was still like ten minutes left of interview time, but 
we didn't really have anything to say to each other so I asked him if like I had gone in it was kind of a ballsy move like I wouldn't always recommend doing this but honestly I just wanted to know and you know either they can tell you yes or they can tell you I don't know and so I felt like it was worth a shot and yeah he said that I had gone in and he was like see you in October and I was like cool and then I left and 10 days later I got an email saying that I had been accepted and then another week after that I was alerted on UCAS that I had officially been accepted to study Tripoli at Imperial. Even though I already had my grades it still said it was a conditional offer, it didn't say like unconditional because I had already done my A-levels. Just on A-level results day that year it updated to say that I was officially going there unconditionally. But yeah, that is it. I know it's been pretty dry on Imperial content lately. If you do want to see more of my Imperial content about like actual student life at Imperial, I did do like a really eh schmet vlogmas in second year. Second year is really intense with work and I think I was only at Imperial for like 14 of the days that I filmed for but the quality of the vlogs just shows you like how much time I had to spend doing work and how I did not have a lot of time to edit the vlogs and film nice clips for you guys. This year I'll try and get some nicer vlogs for you guys. I've been getting a bit better at filming and editing in general over the summer so hopefully I'll get you some nice content. But as usual thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions feel free to leave them down below in the comments or you can message me privately on Instagram if you so wish. I hope you have a great day. Subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already and I'll see you next time. Bye!